Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Feed. My name, of course, is Derek. You can call me Panzo6. And today we're going to talk about Ubisoft's press conference for E3 2016. Uh, if you guys missed out on the other videos where I talked about EA Play, Bethesda Showcase, the Sony conference, and the Xbox conference, you can check those out, as well as a video I did about the Orlando shooting, as well as some other things. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, Ubisoft, they was the... Uh, the middle uh, conference in between Microsoft and Sony, and it was about two hours long. And you know, with most Ubisoft conferences, they're hit or miss. But one thing you can say for sure, uh, you know, Alicia Tyler is for the most part entertaining and energetic, and she kind of throws out. She makes it kind of fun for everybody. But um, Ubisoft played it pretty safe, I think. There was nothing really, really huge that was announced. Um, all mostly all games that we've already seen, but let's go ahead and talk about it. So first thing they announced was uh, <laughs> the, the the stage immediately came out with a bunch of crazy people dressed up and dancing. So they announced uh, Just Dance 2017, which I'm not big in that, but I do give Aisha Tyler again props for talking about the Orlando shooting and. Again, that makes me really happy that they're taking time out of the conference to acknowledge that. Um, and that's great. That's really great. I do give them props for that. Um, the first thing, one of the first games they talked about was, of course, Ghost Recon Wildlands, which is this new open world version of um, the Ghost Recon franchise. Um, you know, whenever first announced, they first announced this last year, I was pretty skeptical about it. Uh, just considering the fact that most of Ubisoft titles at this point are uh, all open world and they kind of have the same feeling, kind of like, go get the base, clear out the guys, put up the flags, and blah, yada, 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 clear territories. Um, it kind of seems like it's the same type of thing, but it's got a big emphasis on four-player co-op. And this time, it's going after a drug cartel. Um, you know, you got all types of different vehicles, helicopters, um, dirt bikes, four wheelers, you name it, drones. Um, the game looked fluid, looked good, graphics were fine. Um, there probably could be a downgrade, you know, Ubisoft on their downgrades, sort of making things a little bit more prettier than they actually are. Um, but the game looks solid. Uh, I myself will probably pick it up because, you know, I played all the Ghost Recon games, um, up until, um, Future Warfare or Future, whatever they called it. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I'm totally into that. Uh, the next thing they showed off was more Watch Dogs 2 coverage, which um, I think this game is going to be one of those big leaps, um, like Assassin's Creed to Assassin's Creed 2. I think Ubisoft learned from our mistakes. The game doesn't look like it's got a serious tone. Um, the characters look kind of fun, a little bit cheesy. Um, but I like it. The, the parkour mechanics, it seems like everything's kind of smoothed out. And Ubisoft usually does this. Whenever they come out with a game, um, the first in their IP, there's some usually some shortcomings. But after that, it's usually pretty well done on the sequels. So I expect a lot from Watch Dogs 2. It actually comes out this holiday season in place of our usual Assassin's Creed. Uh, so another thing they shown off, they brought in Matt and... Uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker uh, showing off the South Park Fractured But Whole. Uh, <laughs> showing off some gameplay, a new trailer. Um, if you guys like The Sick of Truth, I'm sure you'll definitely like this. It looks like there's a whole bunch of new improvements. Um, not only is it a new uh, style of game, well, new setting. Instead of the guys being you know fantasy characters, they're now superheroes and they're trying to make their own movie franchise like Marvel and DC. Um, you know, I, I was a big fan of the first one, and um, just the gameplay was fun. It felt like Paper Mario. It was hilarious. It just felt like a whole season of South Park than the one game, and I expect nothing less from this game. Um, they, there's some improvements on the battle systems where you can now move uh, different parts of the actual grid uh, to place shots and uh, use your abilities. Um, again, it looks awesome, uh, and I can't wait to get a hold of it. <laughs> and they kept the whole, they kept it really, really funny the whole um, time Master and Trey Parker was up there. Um, it was actually really, really good. <laughs> um, but my favorite moment was 
um, at the end of the trailer or the gameplay, um, they're talking about Douchebag, which is the main character of the first one. Uh, you're that same character, and you become a... You get to pick your superhero, what you want to be. And he created a backstory of him walking in on his bad mom having sex, and he's like... He saw something he shouldn't have seen. He saw his dad fucking his mom. And it was the greatest delivery of the line. It was just amazing. Um, I definitely can't get get a hold of that. that especially if you pre-order the game, they give extra incentive. So if you pre-order it, you get a copy of um, the first game, Stick of Truth, for the Xbox One and PS4. I would assume probably on the PC, but I'm not really sure. But I did see on the Xbox Marketplace that there is a uh, option to buy the game. I don't think it's a backwards compatible title. I think it's actually designed for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. I see. The next thing that came out on stage was For Honor. Now, I did not know this game was going to have a single-player component. Um, you know, I thought it was just going to be multiplayer, kind of like chivalry. Uh, but I was wrong. I was wrong. There's going to be a single-player component uh, where you're facing off samurai, vikings, and you know, your knights. And it looks really great. If you guys played Chivalry and the um, Deadliest Warrior expansion, it's very similar to that. But it also kind of reminds me of the single-player portion of Dynasty Warriors. Um, a very, very pretty Dynasty Warriors. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Dynasty Warriors, but it's fun on uh, you know occasionally. But... Um, definitely looking forward to that. It looks a whole lot more brutal than I expected. The kills are pretty cool. It looks like it might have a learning curve to it, but I'm, I missed out on the multiplayer portion, and I thought you could play it in first person, but I don't know if you can or not. Uh, we also got some updates on The Division. Uh, the Xbox One will be able to get the new um, expansions about 30 days early, I believe. Uh, see, we had Survival the expansion for that, and I believe that was another one, but and they're planning on continuing supporting this game for here on now. They're talking about, you know, there's about 9 or 10 million players now playing this game. Um, you know, I got to Division when it came out. I still haven't had enough time to really put, like, enough time into it, so I just now got to the point where <laughs> I'm at the starting zone. So I got past the tutorial and everything, and, you know, I just haven't had time to really get into it. But, you know, what I've played of it is actually pretty solid. It's just, you know, I got Destiny, then you got Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout 4, and all these other games is taking over my life, Overwatch. But I will eventually get into that game. I, you know, if I buy a game, I... You know, if I spend $60 on the game, I have to play it. I would feel really shitty if I didn't play it. So there's that. Uh, we also got um, <laughs> the uh, crew of Star Trek, some of the Star Trek um, films. We had LeVar Burton um, come out. We talked about a new Star Trek VR. Basically, you, you play this game as a co-op experience where you're taking control of a, a starship from the actual Star Trek movies. Um, so it's basically you're on the bridge and you call out you know, your shields and raise that up. And this is really cool. It looks like more of a tech demo more than anything. And I don't think it's going to be a $60 title, uh, but I could be wrong. I hope it's not because it's just kind of, it just looks like one of those games. It's like it might have a little bit of gameplay, um, but it's not going to have a long term um, audience, but I could be wrong, but it's just seeing LeVar Burton up there geeking out and uh, talking about it, and Aisha Tyler, it, it's pretty good. So definitely check that out. They also announced a um, sequel to Grow Home, which is called Grow Up. Um, now, that was an indie title that came out last year. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's a little platformer, but they announced that as well as something that I'm really disappointed in. Um, I'm a really big fan of Far Cry 3's uh, Blood Dragon uh, standalone game. It was probably one of the best, um, it's just the funniest game I've ever played. Um, and they announced it, and it came out as like Trials the Blood Dragon. And I was like, oh, sweet, sweet, this is going to be cool, this is going to be cool, this is going to be great. And it turns out it's going to be a Trials fusion type game. Uh, Red Lynx is behind it, as well as the guy that worked on Far Cry Blood Dragon, and I, it takes place in the same universe, but not what I expected, and I guess it's out right now, so it was 
uh, basically a stealth release, but it was actually announced at E3. Again, not really too bit too excited about that. Um, so what else did they go out? And now since they're going to give a game out every month this year, starting out with uh, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. Um, that's going to be uh, from Uplay. Uh, there was another game that's for the Oculus Rift called uh, Eagle Flight, which is the multiplayer. Uh, you're playing these birds and you're trying to capture eggs or something like that. But it actually looked pretty decent. And they talked a little bit about the Assassin's Creed movie as well as announced that they will be working with Sony on a Watch Dogs film. Uh, not only that, Sony does have 30 days exclusive DLC for Watch Dogs, so they get that 30 days early. Um, overall, the press conference wasn't too terrible. It wasn't great. Um, they played it pretty safe. No huge announcements. No Assassin's Creed was announced this year aside from the movie. Um, no Splinter Cell, which I wish, I wish they would announce a new Splinter Cell. Uh, even if they just reboot the whole series, um, that would be great, which I kind of doubt. And if they do, it's probably going to be an open-world Splinter Cell. Uh, overall, I'd probably give it give the conference at least a B, just because, you know, it was entertaining. Um, it didn't drag on too long because it actually felt, you know, it was fun. Um, you know, the games were fun, and it was pretty comical overall. Um but yeah, it wasn't too bad. I, I definitely, if you guys haven't checked it out, you can check that out um, just on YouTube, whatever. But overall, that's what I think about it. If you guys like this, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Um, help this channel grow. Uh, you can take a look at my past uh, E3 coverage. And I'm going to be doing a new video here soon. I'm going to take my top 10 announcements from E3. And I'm going to compile them and just tell you what I did like. And I may do maybe a top five of things I didn't like. Um, so expect that maybe later this week. Uh, you can check out the Halo 2 Wars beta Let's Play I did earlier. And hopefully this week, maybe by Friday, we'll have a new episode of Let's Play Adrift. We need to continue making it through the vastness of space and hopefully figure out what happened and get rescued. But again, guys, thank you so much for checking this out. My name, of course, is Panto6. You can call me Derek. And hit like, subscribe, and I love you. Thank you so much, guys.